think, uh, yeah. Now it's it's becoming clear how uh, about this. So before opening to the more detailed questions, uh, if anybody wants to have a general question or comments, uh, I don't know if Jakob, do you want to say something from the predictive coding kind of perspective? No, I need no? to internalize properly. I'd like Leo to say something about the predictive coding perspective. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. I never thought about it. And it's it's funny because I've been working on this for so many years. Um, so I feel like it's hard to improvise. Now, one thing that's clear that also came up in this conversation is the the action part is crucial. Yeah. Right. Like, and this is something that Julia was insisting, and mm. that's why we have two channels in the paper. Mm. In the beginning, we only had, had one. And he said it's crucial that it's about action and, and perception and action. You are receiving things and you're doing that, and that's what happened. And you can average over those that, that thing and, and like make a measure, and it's a measurement of something, but it's not about what that system at that particular time is doing. Hmm. What, what when you say action, in in what sense do you mean action? Because uh, that's the, that's really an interesting point. The effect in, in IoT, you have the cause and the effect. So by action here, I mean that you cannot exist without both in IoT. If you only have cause and your effect is zero, you don't exist as a mechanism or as a system. But, but just ac action is meant in a very technical sense that only makes sense within IoT, right? It's I... not active action as in active inference or you know, common sense action or anything like that. I mean, it is connected because in the end, the whole system, it has actions. But to your point, the main difference is that here, the action is internal, is the action of one part of the system over itself. That would be the biggest difference. My, in, my, yeah. my guess is that the, probably the biggest sort of uh, difference is that the uh, action or output in the IIT sense is all about the modification of the probability on the output side, right? So it's the uh, change of the constraint. But isn't it also true in the active inference? You have- I think the active the... inference needs to change something physically outside, right? No. no? The action is, the cause on the outside has got nothing to do with active inference. Uh, for me, so, uh, the action active inference was... is, is just inferring a policy that then leads to a, a, a change of the active states of the system itself. So it's intrinsic in that sense. But I don't know if it's intrinsic in any sense that we've been talking about today. Mm -hmm. okay. But you do that through action, right? You You need to... Once, so what I understood from active inference is that in the original predictive coding, you only updated your priors, so you perceive things differently. And now when you have, let's say a prediction error or mismatch, active, active inference allows you to go there and act upon the world to make the world the same as your priors. So that when you get the, the next perception, it does match your priors, but not because you adopted your priors, because you yeah. adopt the world. Yeah. But that, that outside that's... part of the loop is, um, you don't need that necessarily. You know, it might be that your action misfires. That, that's, that, that it'll generate more prediction error. You might have to update internally. But just what action is or what active inference is, is a completely intrinsic process where the internal states are making changes in the active states that then have a connection out into the world that might feed back in some ways successfully or not. So you, what you're saying is correct, but actually it's all happening within the market blanket or whatever. Right. Um, so maybe we shouldn't continue that much more, but it's, uh, there's an interesting line there uh, also with this Templeton stuff we've been talking about. 
now about the role of active inference for conscious perception and so on. Yeah. But maybe well, that's to be yeah. pursued later. And also, just before going to a more uh, detailed question, I also wanted to uh, point out one also general kind of interest to us as well, uh, which is, uh, as you may see right now, Kianshen is uh, one of the students here who is trying to kind of quantify the information of you know, a moment of experience. And there, it's again kind of you know, in parallel to your work or statement of Julio, that not only enriching the imp uh, you know, inf uh, input kind of side of the information, what we are doing is enriching the output from the subject's you know, response side. You know, typically subjects can re report that, oh, I saw it, I didn't see it, or something like that, right? But that limits the am amount of the information, intrinsic information that we can estimate. So we are actively trying to allow subjects to report more richer description, like you know, verbal description or uh, among the thousands of possible uh, responses you can choose or you can uh, define the uh, you know, graded level of similarity between one thing to multiple things, which is also Ariel is doing to characterize how much we can, you know, sort of influence outside, uh, you know, outside. And unless you have that side enriched, you always get sort of your yeah, bottleneck. A bottleneck, yeah. All right. So that side, that part, you know, I totally got it this time. All right. Yeah. All right. You so... could, you could, as a researcher, right, go there and like just do statistics on the answers and say that on average accumulates the answers and say, oh, this person can see a hundred thousand things, <laughs> but actually it's all one at a time. And this thing that sees a hundred thousand things, it's not the person, right? It's, it, it's an average of a person, person over time that the experimenter is defining. I don't know if it makes sense. I was trying to make a connection to what you were saying. Yeah, I, I think that's more correct. Yeah. And okay, so let's open up the discussion to the uh, people. Uh, first, maybe starting from a more general kind of question. If not, may, uh, Ariel, is your question more detailed or more general? Uh, it's probably more detailed. I think other people should go first. Anyone? Otherwise, yeah, go ahead, Ariel. Okay, um, no. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to the action-based explanation bit from the talk again, because maybe that answered my question and I missed it. Um, the thing that I'm confused of from an intrinsic perspective is just how the mechanism has any idea what its uh, alphabet and probability distribution even is, such that it can receive symbols and do anything with them. I think what you might be saying though, is you're just like, if you assume the mechanism is like some probability distribution and it knows what its alphabet is already, like its potential alphabet is, um, then based on the symbols it receives, it can calculate this intrinsic information stuff. Is that is that the assumption that it just already somehow knows the probability distribution in alphabet that it will be receiving symbols from? Yeah, that it's it's a bit more subtle. It's not that the mechanism knows. The mechanism is that alphabet. Imagine that you have a neuron with a certain number of synapses arriving, you know, the dendrites. It's all. It's true that at some point the experimenter has to decide how it's representing that neuron. It is not going to come from, you know, you cannot do do the science with the actual thing. The actual thing is just an observation. You have to model it sometime. And those are the postulates in IoT. And we model them as probability distributions. So the neuron is going to be modeled as having a probability distribution over the cause repertoire that when these and these and these and these and these and these and these, and these neurons are firing, I fire there is a certain probability. But then when it's these and these, not that, not that, and then I fire off another probability. The, this is a definition that 
is independent of the mechanism knowing anything. It's the experimenter defining what is a mechanism. Respect right. to that, can you put the slide again? Uh, sure. Uh, probably the page four or something like that. Uh, when you have a figure of the wires. Yeah, okay. No. I mean, I repeated in the end. Right? This one, this one, this one. Yeah. So, so you're saying that, that uh, it's the experimental choice to define whether this boundary is the mechanism or including up until here is a experimental choice. It, it's, yeah. Am I understanding it has, correctly? It has to be. Yes, so that, that's also related to, you know, my question, which was half answered. And I, I'm also not 100%, you know, clear whether we should actually, you know, regard this system to have an access to the fact that it can have eight outputs. And also it has, it knows that, you know, one of them is perfect and seven others are corrupt. Or it's, it's completely ignorant about you know, even the number of the wires or the state of the wires or quality of the wires. But it cannot be completely ignorant because that's what the mechanism is. The mechanism has, is these wires and it's doing something and it's being caused by something. Okay, then you, you should actually then draw this uh, thick, you know, box, including this part, no? Yeah, sorry, sorry to just be technical and slightly annoying. It's not just the wires, right? It's the wires and the probability distribution because you could have the same wires mm -hmm. and different probability distributions of how inputs how would that be? How can you have the same wires and a different probability? Uh, so I'm just imagining from like a neural perspective, like you've got a set of neurons and they've got particular connections, but maybe they have like the inputs. Um, there's like varying firing rates over time. So like sometimes some neurons are more active and others are less active. And at another time, it's like different setup, um, but with the same like physical connections between them. I guess then you, you'd just be saying that the wire in that sense is also like the intrinsic properties of the neurons. And if the neurons are different, then the wires are in a sense different? Yes, that's, okay. that's correct. Right. And not only that, if you do what you said, that you have different setups and you have, you know, you are ignoring some, some neurons because they, they, for some, some experimental reason. On IoT, that's equivalent to trying different macroing in space and time. Like trying, you, you define different alphabets by defining different mechanisms. And the answer of which one is the substrate is the one that has maximum amount of integrated information. I see. I so see. it's so not like you as experimenter can define anything in IoT. You as an experimenter can define anything here in, in the general sense of intrinsic information. But once you go to IAT and you have to find the substrate, you have to try all of them. And each one of them is going to have access in the sense that they are that particular probability distribution. And if now you have a different probability distribution, it's a diff different candidate system that may or may not be the maximum. Yeah, thanks, that makes okay. sense. Does it make yeah. sense that you, yeah. you, you don't you don't really choose <laughs> the one that is the maximum is the substrate and you as a researcher is just trying to find it and you have to try all possible you know enclosures and alphabets yeah. to to find the one that has the maximum. Masafumi or Angus or Yota, do you guys have uh, who have been working on IoT or John? Uh, do you have any questions? Fine, all the uh, questions during our, yeah. I have maybe kind of like a weird, maybe not so meaningful question, but I've kind of got lost as to what what information actually refers to. So at the end, when you describe the hoverboard and you, you were talking about, it's the kind of like causal power, that that kind of made sense in terms of, you, you want to look at what the mechanism can do, but mm -hmm. then, but the measure that you, 
talk about is intrinsic information. So what, what's the information actually? Mm, sorry, I'm not sure. In this yeah, I'm not sure if it's like a meaningful question or a thing, but yeah. I think, are you asking what's the connection between information and, causa and causation? Is this? Yeah, may maybe, yeah. Maybe that's what I'm getting at. The main, I would say that the main difference between IIT and other measure, or other theories where you measure information is that here, the information is causal in the sense that you are physically partitioning the system to obtain the probabilities. Instead of working with probabilistic models, we work with directed causal graphs. And of course, from these causal graphs, you can get the probabilities where you compute things, but you cannot go in the other direction. So it's more general, um, the connection. It's not only in, in IIT, like if you get Judea Pearl's work, you have this idea that you can have a certain probability, you know, conditional probability where you can measure information, but what's being reflected there are correlations or uh, hidden variables that are not represented in your physical system. And on IIT, you cannot have that because of how you get the probabilities. First, you have to define the first order mechanisms, and then you have to go in each one of them and perturb them in all possible states. And that's how you acquire the, the probabilities. And now you can combine these into candidate systems by taking the tensor product between all these probabilities and getting you know, different alphabets. But it has to start with the physical system that's being physically perturbed. And that's where causation comes from. That's my, my understanding. So we measure information, but it's causal because we also have the existence postulate. It's not only information. Does that make sense? We have existence, intrinsicality, information, right? Integration. It's not only information, but in the end, I guess here we are focusing on the information part, which is the difference between probability distributions, but all the rest, how, how you get the probability distributions and how you do the cuts and finding the maximum, it, all of this is very important to, to be able to talk about causation and not just information. Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, Leo, so the information in your presentation or IAT can be all replaced by the word or phrase of causal power, in fact, right? I think so, yeah, that's a good question. Actually, one, the, I mean, I, one of the reviewers suggested that yeah. for the, the, the new paper we are writing. Hmm. Eric so, Coyle, you know, once uh, I was talking about this kind of issue, he, is, uh, he was saying that, you know, yeah, I, IT is actually a misnomer. At this point, you know, it's all about causal powers. So integrated causal power theory of consciousness is more potential, you know? appropriate action or less confusing. Yeah, I think what Julia would say, <laughs> uh, probably should ask him, but... But Julia would probably think that the information actually should mean causal power. That's what I was right? going to say. Yeah, that's I what see. he... This, this discussion comes often in, in the lab. Yeah. That's usually the answer is that in the past, information was misnamed. Yeah. And because... Shannon also didn't want to call it as a information as well, right? No, no, in yeah. That, I mean, even entropy was right. you know, the very the famous statement from von Neumann that nobody knows mm. what it is, so you, you better mm. you may as well call it entropy. It's but information is even worse. Like Julio always takes the root of the, the words that I like in form, like to to give a form, right? To shape. give a form, right? To give a form or shape. And whatever is giving form or shape is the physical system and not the, the receiver and the sender defining an alphabet. Mm, mm. I mean, they are giving the shape inside their brain, <laughs> but then mm. 
then it's not information in the channel, right? That the information that you measure in the channel is more like potential information, you know? Yeah. That's, that's how I would call it, like maximal possible information that you can have in there. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, anyone else? Uh, my impression is not kind of, yeah, directly related to the topic of this, but I wonder whether there's any um, the PyFi package implementing this uh, intrinsic information. Yeah, I think the last version is already um, the one that's in GitHub. Already implements. Okay. Yeah. But again, we are still developing the the measure, a similar measure for Big Phi. Mm -hmm. So this is not in the package yet. Okay, I see. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, I just have a quick question uh, now. Mm -hmm. This is to do with, uh, you know, your previous comment that the wires are part of the mechanism. So they're not separate from the mechanism. And if that is the case, sorry, I've just lost. Yeah. If that is the case, then any information coming from the input, which is there in the wires are also part of the system. So I'm just wondering where there is a, where is the boundary between the actual input and the system that you're talking about or the mechanism you're talking about? Or is there a yeah. boundary at all? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. It's, it's what I was saying before that IAT starts <clears throat> identifying the first order mechanisms. So there is this assumption that you should be able to find the smallest atom, indivisible atom, that will have a certain number of states. And you cannot partition it further. So this is an assumption. And I, here we are studying consciousness, so we, st we start with neurons and we can try mini columns, we can potentially go to macromolecules, but the, the point is that once you identify these first order mechanisms, according to IAT, you have to try all possible macroing of these first order mechanisms. So to your question, the states that are the symbols, right? That the alphabet that's available for the first order mechanism is not defined by the, by the experiment. The experimenter is not putting the border as much as it cannot divide it anymore. And then after you get these first order mechanisms, it's up to the experimenter to combine them and get all possible alphabets out of it. Each one of these combinations is going to give you a different set of wires, for instance, with a different repertoire, and you are going to compute phi for that. Yeah, and I think the you know, substrate is the one yeah, that's the probably, maximum. Yeah, probably, Vinay, you, if you are interested in this kind of topic, you need to read the IIT papers by yourself and also watch the IIT tutorials in our website. Um, and then probably you, you can start to come back what Leo means by computing everything or computing uh, you know, all the scales and so on without seeing the entire IIT picture. It's probably very difficult to understand it. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry uh, if it's not clear. It was a kind of quick presentation. Uh, didn't have time to. No, 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 it's, it's totally it's fine. I mean, uh, we kind of you know, assume that this part was uh, more kind of, you know, advanced uh, without assuming some kind of uh, preliminary knowledge. Yeah. Oh, diet. Okay. Uh, any, yeah, Angus. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that you're working on like you, you you mentioned that you're working on a big five version for this intrinsic information, and I like I just wanted to know or have an idea of like whether it's going to be similar to the way that um, EMD is used for big five in IIT three, or if it's going to be completely different. So where in IIT three you basically uh, find it's basically an 
extended EMD between all the mechanisms and it's some summation, uh, a weighted summation of that, right? Is it going to be kind of, or are you working towards that kind of similar thing for this intrinsic information or is it going to be completely different? The goal for the, the big high measure is to make it as similar as the intrinsic difference that it just presented for the mechanism as possible. So probably it's going to be different from the EMD okay. because we are trying to, these properties that I presented, they are not restricted to the mechanism. They are actually first the properties of the system, existence, intrinsicality, and uh, specificity. So we need a measure that obey these things and the EMD doesn't out of the, <clears throat> From the start, the specificity is not true because the EMD also sums over all possible states, like the Kubla Kleibel. It's just inside of an average, you have the arbitrary F that we choose the, the Hamming distance, but you sum how much it takes to move each one of the states to the other states. And here you're only interested in one state. So, so intuitively, does it mean that the, the intrinsic distance version of uh, big five probably identifies the complex that is uh, more causally you know deterministic over the other and then locked in a very strong way rather than sort of the diffusely kind of you know influencing one thing to the other and then it's very difficult to cut clearly kind of situation probably yeah i i think i would yeah. hope so that before we are kind of looking at some sort of average that doesn't really reflect the phenomenology at that time point. Mm. So it's a, it's a constant strive to get closer and closer to whatever system reflects the phenomenology. And the EMD mm. was a, a, an attempt to capture the relations between the different states, the, mm. the, the different mechanisms, sorry. But now we have relations explicitly defined and computed separately from, from the distinctions. And the EMD is doing more than it, it was supposed to do, I think. And that's what you say that it was measuring some sort of diffuse um, interaction between the mechanisms. And hopefully now it's going to be a maximum at that time point, that specific T. I see. Okay. Uh, is there any further questions for those who haven't asked question, like Aniko or Tianxin or James or Nicolo or William, Nan, Matafumi, Dominic, Kosuke, Jun, Sharon, Tomoya? Anything? Yeah, I have a Last. question, yeah. but uh, yeah, I couldn't understand many things, but uh, to, you know, better understand the, uh, your attempt, uh, in my understanding that uh, this paper basically, you know, proposes a new measure that clarifies the difference between two distributions. And uh, in I IIT 3.0, we use the EMD, Earth Mover Distance, to quantify the difference between the two distributions. And then we define the information and the integrated information. And uh, so this is just replacing the EMD with the new measure or something different. That's precisely what it's doing, yes. Okay, the, so, but, but uh, in this paper, you didn't show how you quantify the, you know, information, like in IIT 3.0, we, you know, quantify information between two time points, right? Past and the future, or, or current and the past and the current and the future, or something like this. But uh, you are trying to do the exactly the same thing, just by just replacing the EMD with uh, this new measure? That's correct. This paper 
it was written in a more general framework of information okay. theory because we believe that the properties that we are defining, they are related to information theory in general and not just IIT. We uh -huh. are now writing mm. the uh, mechanism integrated information, no, the measuring integrated information of a mechanism, which is another paper, mm. where we are exactly applying the measure, the measurement to examples of mechanisms. And that's the figure that I showed in the end. I see. Uh, it's from the new paper. It's under review now. Mm. Uh, it, it's the same thing, right? You have the a system mm. oh, okay. I of see. connected nodes. Uh, mm. They have, in this case, two states, up and down. Mm. Uh, and then you can make the causal graph. That's the temporarily unfolded graph. Mm. And you're going to look in the cause and the effect, find the maximum, try all possible cuts, and... Uh, exactly as before. I think the other difference mm. now mm. is that the cuts, they are, they come from a different subset of possible cuts. So not only we are replacing the EMED with a measure that we are deriving from the properties of IIT instead of choosing a measure that we hope is going to fit. We are trying to develop a new measure that is derived from the properties, right? So it should fit by yeah. design. But besides doing that, we are also changing the allowed cuts to fix mm. problems of mechanisms that they should not exist, or they they should exist, but they exist way less than than they should. Both cases were were true. And generally speaking, the cuts now, they have to cut through the mechanism. That's the main difference. Before you could, could cut only through the purview. And this is how you, you know, quantify integrated information with this new measure, right? Like you consider the partition system and the unpartition system and uh, quantify the difference between the two. Yeah, so in, okay. in the paper that I presented, we only have the complete partition. Ah, okay, complete partition. That's why I'm so calling that's... integrated in, uh, intrinsic information and not integrated intrinsic information, right? Exactly. Yeah, so that probably determines the maximum of integrated information, maybe. Yeah, uh, we are being agnostic in the sense that the queue that you use, mm. right, as the, the, the partition can be mm. anything. Because okay. you can have a system in the effect side, for instance, that the partition distribution can be anything. Mm. Uh, right. So we, we are just saying that it doesn't matter what it is, independent of the mm. mechanism, it should work like this. But you're totally right. Now that we have the measure, we have to go back and say what happens when I try all possible cuts and all possible purviews and find the maximum and... Uh, and find all the distinctions in the system. Okay, so you Hopefully can- should be published well, yeah. soon. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so do you see any problem in applying this new measure for quantifying integrated information so far? No, no. no. Uh, so it works well. <laughs> everything, uh, um, we are going back, right? It's not like we came mm. from nowhere and now right, we right, right. to it. We, right. we came from IIT and we realized that the, the requirements, they were general enough to mm. produce an information measure that may be useful anywhere, mm. not just on IIT. Right. Like the example that I mentioned of the, they call it uh, one-shot transmissions. So if mm. you have like a military operation and then you cannot like keep sending things because you may be discovered. So you cannot like find channel capacity and use the optimal encoder because you may be discovered. So you want to transmit only once mm. and you want to do that with like optimally. So they, they, what they do is that they define a acceptable amount of error. And then mm. the Kubak Leibler can give you the size of the channel. Here, the error would be whatever maximize the distance. So this is okay. just one example that we gave in the paper that may be a possible application, but 
now we are going back and making sure that, uh, yeah, we have to do everything that was performed in the 3.0. Yeah. So yeah. just one, one last question is that, uh, so in, when we, you know, introduce EMD in II3.0, uh, the motivation is that uh, we want to introduce the, you know, distance or the similarity uh, between the states, right? And, uh, but are you, now you sort of abandoned uh, this motivation. Like in this measure, uh, there is no, you know, dif different, you know, distance between the, any, you know, state, different state. So every state is sort of uh, equally, you know, treated in a sense. So why, <laughs> so is it okay? Oh, Julio, <laughs> yeah, it was it was by design. That's what I was trying to mm -hmm. tell now when he asked if the measure for the system is going to find more sharp system instead of some kind of diffuse yeah. um, causal power. And the reason we we are switching out from EMD is exactly because of this aspect, excuse me, that you mentioned. Mm. that captures the difference between states yes. is now being directly computed by relations as okay, was yeah. computed in Andrew's paper. I see. So yeah. the, the states, they are only different as mm. is meaningful for the system. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the problems with EMD that it was capturing difference mm. between states that were not intrinsically relevant was relevant mm -hmm. from you know the experimenters zero zero is right. more different from mm -hmm. one one than zero one but not for the system it has it's only relevant for the system if those states they overlap with other states of different distinctions okay and since this now is captured directly by relation it's going to com contribute to big phi directly so there is no you know real uh, there is no reason to do that in the information measure. So it should not do that. Otherwise, we would have a measure of relation at the same time you know, that it's measuring information. It would be a, another requirement. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right. But it's done already by relations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I see. So that, that last part of the discussion was quite interesting and also relevant for us um, as well, because, you know, I don't know whether you actually know, but we are doing some psychophysics experiments uh, on uh, similarity rating to characterize sort of the, you know, space of the qualia. And then also trying to do some neuroimaging experiment or do, you know, use the uh, recording data that can also give us a kind of the estimate of the IIT structure or, you know, uh, mix type structure, according mm -hmm. to Masahumi's paper. And then uh, to see whether the similarity of the percept between the two, let's say red patch and the green patch, reflects the similarity of the IIT structure when, you know, the system is experiencing red or green compared to red and orange. You know, which is much smaller in terms of distance. But uh, so what I gathered was that uh, this intrinsic measure itself is not really relevant for that kind of calculation, but more of the relations, like overlap of the things between the two structures are more directly related to the similarity of the experience, right? That's completely right. What you're looking for so should be reflected. That? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope we know soon, but okay. it, it's it, the, the relations, it's finished. It's whatever is in Andrew's paper. That's how you mm. compute the relations. What is not clear is what is the contribution of relations to the to big five. That's what mm. we are trying to figure out. And it has to be taken into consideration uh, together with the distinctions and they all should be assessed from the intrinsic perspective. So you're going to have, you know, expansion, dilution, and, and all those properties that I discussed. Okay. 
All right. Is there any other question? Angus, you wanted to ask something? I, ha I have one, but it's it's kind of unrelated to or not so related to intrinsic information per se. So if there's any other questions, I'm happy to defer. Just go ahead. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you mentioned that with your new mechanism stuff, you're looking at a different subset of cuts between uh, a different subset of cuts. Um, and I was just wondering, uh, how do you treat one or single node mechanisms? Because you can't really cut the mechanism. Yeah. Does that's... that make sense? So, like, if so, in the IT3, we, we assess. Uh, one node mechanisms by cutting connections to the purview, to the candidate purviews or whatever. So if you're now only cutting, if you have to cut the mechanism specifically now, how, how do you treat those um, one, one node uh, mechanisms? That's a great question. And it's uh, one of the main reasons that we're changing the, the possible cuts. Because if you have a one node mechanism and you just like in this example here, right? That I have in, from the, the paper that it's submitted. If you have A over BC and you just cut A from B, you're not really assessing the, the causal power of A over BC, right? You're just assessing the causal power of A over B. So the solution is that the first order, the one unit mechanisms, the, the first uh, order mechanisms, they can only be destroyed so if you partition the mechanism, you destroy it. And destroy means the complete partition. You, you noise all the nodes at the same time. So it's basically you remove the mechanism, right? So you can remove a, no a node, but then it cuts like vertically like this. So in this case, A is a single first order mechanism, right? And uh, it, that's the only cut that it's allowed. It's the one that called the complete partition. In the beginning, it was called the disintegration partition because you disintegrate the mechanism. But now we are calling it the complete partition. Yeah. OK, thanks. I, I like that solution. Yeah. OK, any other questions or comments? Otherwise, yeah, thanks a lot for Leo. Um, for all this extended discussion and the clarification. Yeah. To me, understanding why this action part is really important you know, through your informal figures were very helpful. And uh, uh, just to make sure, you probably don't want this part of the slide to be up on the YouTube, right? This, uh, because this is under the review. Yes, I just realized that. <laughs> I forgot it was being recorded. Um, it should be accepted soon. So it depends when okay. it goes online. Perhaps we can hold it a little bit. I okay. don't know. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we can also send you all these, you know, recorded part. Uh, and then if you feel any part is irrelevant or, you know, um, not, not good, we can actually just, you know, remove it from the distribution. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. But sounds all good. Uh, thanks a lot. And... Uh, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you now. Yeah. Keep in touch. Bye. Yeah. Thank you for organizing this. Bye.